miss you, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing that is not supposed to happen. What happened? Because the man told her we don't close today. It's going to take another 30 days for us to close. And she couldn't afford to go another 30 days. She said, no, God, you got to do something right now. And God, quicker than quick, faster than fast. Because he'll move like that when you got a relationship with him. And here Peter is a little biased because he thinks the blessings of God only belongs to the Jews. And God's about to open up the door to the Gentiles. I dare you look at your neighbor and tell him that's who you are, Gentile. <laughs> the blessing is about to fall on the Gentiles. And so after Peter has this vision, the men at the same time say, when you work with God, God got timing. It's not like God's timing. Peter has a vision on the roof. When he comes off of the roof of having a vision, the men who can lead you sent to Joppa are knocking at the door. Who y'all want? We came to see Peter. And Peter would have never went with them normally, but because God has just spoken to him just five minutes ago on the roof, Peter said, okay. I perceive that I need to go with y'all. Let's go. Uh, and Peter gets to Cornelius' house. <clears throat> and if we were look at verse 34, verse 34, Peter says a pro profound statement. I hope it's verse 34. <laughs> uh, verse 34. And Peter says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of the truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. God does not look at the outside. What he looks at is the inside. He looks at our heart. And when he looks at our heart, he looks at the heart to see do they really want me? When, they, when he looks at a heart, he looks at how deep are they really willing to have a relationship with me? When he looks at a heart, he looks at do they really want me or do they want the stuff I got? Mm -hmm. See, all the ladies could appreciate that. They wish they could look at some guy's heart and say, do he really want me or does he want what I want? Yes, I'm supposed to fast. 
But if I don't and I have a relationship with him, he'll still mark on my behalf. Yeah. It'll, it'll get on me, you know, you need to turn up right now. But if I just fast out of routine, I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Because see, after you fast for a certain period of time out of routine, it no longer becomes a sacrifice to your body. Your body is used to not having food on Tuesday and Thursday because that's what you've been doing for years. So it's no longer a sacrifice to your body. Because fasting is supposed to be crucifying the flesh, but if your flesh is used to it, how are you crucifying it? So are you doing religious routines to think you have a relationship, or do you really have a relationship with God? Because see, when you got a relationship with God, and you get in your secret closet or your prayer time, you ain't phony with Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't falling with him. You gotta know, Lord, I, I messed up. You know, I wasn't supposed to take that drink that if I did. I wasn't supposed to do this, but I did. Lord, forgive me. I wasn't supposed to go that way, but I did. You, you just honest with him. I just messed up, Lord. I, I was trying to walk, and you told me not to go. You told me not to answer that phone call, but I did. And I just messed up. You just honest with God, and God said, okay, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm going to build you a little bit more. I'm going I'm to re-fortify you a little bit more than this time. You ain't going to fall for that same trap. You ain't going to fall for that same thing that the enemy is trying to throw you away. I'm going to build you. See, you ain't phony like you done did all this and you done, you all this perfect. When you got a relationship with God, you ain't scared to tell God, I just ain't getting it, God. Yeah. I'm doing everything I can. I, I just ain't getting it. I need you to help me. I need you to I need you to come and do something in my life because I just ain't getting it. Yeah. And God has more respect for you than the one that wants to come and perpetrate that they got something that they don't. Uh, for Revelation tells us, God said, I would that you be hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. When you look at the Greek, that means the vomit. That means you made God sick to his stomach. That he had to throw up because he don't want you half stomach. Just be honest with me that you ain't got it. Just be honest with me that you're still messing up. Just be honest with me that you can't stop seeing the boy. You can't stop seeing the girl. You be fine, go down. Just, just be honest with God. And he said, I'll work with your honesty and I'll build you up. A point that they won't move you no more. But don't act like you got it all together and you don't. You make me sick and I got a vomit. God, I'd rather you be in sin and say, Lord, I'm just a sinner, messed up, tore up from the floor, than to act like it's something that you know. My God. He respects you more when you come into his house. And still, I ain't saying yet, I still, I still want to come. I still want to ever work. I, I just want to be here. I feel like yeah, I need to yeah. be here. I said, that's okay, just keep on coming. I yeah. know you ain't saying yeah. just keep on coming. You know, he, he, he respects you more than he respects those who are trying to perpetrate. And then on Saturday night, they're doing stuff all kinds of crazy. They want to come back on Sunday. I'm like, oh, I'm holy, I'm holy, I'm holy. And God said, I can't, I don't want to visit that church because you make me sick. Wow. In worship service, are you the whole of Mm, can God not come in because when he comes in, you know you ever been past the bathroom and somebody been in there and you can go past it and just, Lord, have mercy. That's how God does sometimes when someone's trying to get into worship because you got to worship in the spirit of the truth and you ain't being truthful with him. And he comes by and says, I can't even go down there. Uh, I can't even go down there. Because if I go down there, I'm just going to pop it. But here, brother, you throw your arms and say, Lord, yeah, that was me at the club last night. I'll just mess it up for you, Lord. Just, just give me another chance. You come down in the midst and clean you up. Because it's all about the relationship. Yeah. Let's go to verse 44. The Bible declares in verse 44, listen to what it says. While Peter yet spake these words, other words, while Peter yet preached. What does it say? The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. It won't no tearing service. It won't no laying on hands. Won't nobody 
tuning up on the organ. Uh -huh. He was just declaring the glory of God to the people. But why did they receive the Holy Ghost? Because their relationship was so tight, they were ready. Yes. They were ready. And when I left you on last Sunday, I told you, go on the internet, go in your concordance on your Bible, go pull up scriptures about the Holy Ghost and research about the Holy Ghost. Find out what the Holy Ghost is all about. Because see, even in the midst of a service like this, why I'm just preaching according to the word. If God no respect to a person, if he did it for them, he got to do it for you. If you meet the same qualification, and I declare to you this morning that the qualification is relationship. Uh Oh, that they killed Cadillus had. He didn't have his Jewish background because he wanted Jew. He didn't have all that religious training because he wasn't training all that. He knew how to pray and he knew how to give. And those two things right there got God's eye on him. And just because he had a relationship with God, God said, all y'all got to do is hear the priest's word and I'll let the Holy Ghost fall. Your relationship can be so tight that all you got to do is hear the priest's word and in the midst of hearing the with me. What's happening to me? What's happening? What's happening? It's the Holy Ghost trying to come on the inside. So the Holy Ghost is, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is like jumping in the pool. It wants to saturate you all over. Yes. Because when you look up the definition of baptism, it means to be immersed in whatever you're being baptized in. When we baptize you in the water, we immerse you in the water, take you down underneath the water and bring you back up. And when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God wants to immerse you in his spirit, take you all in his spirit and then bring you back up so you're saturated with him. Then in the midnight hour when you feel like giving up, he can talk to you. Yeah. And he don't need an appointment. My God. He can talk to you because he's always already dwelling on the inside. Mm. And it's all about the relationship. Yeah. And relationship with God ain't like relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. Y'all know relationship with other people, you gotta do this, they gotta do that, they gotta go here, they gotta relationship with God. He first asked the question, he said, Do you love me? If you love me, keep my commandments. 